Hello fellow problem solvers, so they're going to be doing a problem from the all Russian math Olympiad in 2018 for grade 9, problem number 1. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of 5 minutes, ideally 30, not more than 45. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next 5 minutes, really. Read the problem, put your first ideas out on paper. And here's what it says, so it sounds scary. So suppose there's an infinite sequence that is strictly increasing. Positive integer is okay. Uh, this is also an infinite sequence of primes. They are distinct. Turns out we have a n minus a k is p n minus p k for all n and k greater than or equal to one. We must prove the sequence only consists of prime numbers. So let's look at this condition. Like this is really there are these two conditions. P n divides a n and this thing right here. So. This condition says, mind you, mind you, wait a second. If this sequence consists only of primes, we can go at it backwards. Then what is a n going to be? Well, then a n is going to be p n. Right? Because if a n is a prime, it's divisible by a prime, then by prime p n, that a n is that prime. So that just tells you, okay, we're going to have this side is going to equal this side on one well, one hand it's going to be equal to p n minus p k now how can we use this condition and that's where i want you to pause for three minutes and figure out how can you use it and the answer is so you have a n minus a k is p n minus p k for every pairs of n and k and this is a somewhat decently common technique is when you have this right this is something that depends on two variables you choose now you can choose a n minus a l it's p n minus p l and you can maybe combine these two in some way shape and form but you'll get you won't really get that far you'll get that Actually, you might now that I think of it, but you'll get to the same thing. The thing is, this is equivalent to a n minus p n is a k minus p k. Now, why is this stronger? Well, this is something that applies for every pair of n and k. If I fix k to be 1, a1 minus p1, and I let n vary from 2 to infinity, I get a n minus p n is this is equal to this. But what is this? Well, n can vary and p n can vary, but this thing right here remains a constant. So now I have that a n minus p n is equal to a constant. And now can you pause for three minutes and try to finish the problem? Well, Given that Pn divides An, this means that Pn divides that constant for every prime that's a member of the sequence. Now, this sequence A1 through An is strictly increasing. A1 is less than, A2 is less than, An is less than everything else. So, and Pn keeps dividing these for terms. Now we could actually have, now I'm looking, okay, we could actually have this be a, like p could always be 2, right? But then the problem is here, like could you get, actually no, p has to be distinct, right? Where was that? Is a sequence of, and this is a sequence of distinct primes. So we have n distinct primes, all dividing c which means the primes are relatively prime. You can have, you're going to have the products for PI for the first n distinct primes are also going to divide C. This falls on the fact that if A divides C, B divides C, and the GCD of A and B is one, then we have A times B divides C. All right, you can think of this as 12, is divisible by four and three, then it's divisible by four times three. So this follows from this. This, this, follow, this follows from this applied repeatedly, which means that, and this thing right here grows without bound. 
right? So if C is divisible by every prime of member of the sequence, um, actually, how do I put this best? Maybe just saying if C was a positive integer, then we would have this would need to hold true for every single n. However, this is impossible because once you add every p, the difference between p n plus between n plus one and then is at least two, and at some points at some point it will reach c. So given this, this implies that c is equal to zero, and then what we have, well, this implies that a n is equal to p n for every n, and this solves the problem. This goes to show that sometimes problems can seem scary, look scary. How do I do this? This is like a sequence and a sequence of primes, an infinite sequence. What do I do? There are so many things. But in reality, sometimes it's meant to hide something. I think the main part of the problem is looking at this in terms of this, right? And then seeing, oh, wait, this is a constant. This doesn't change. Whereas if I change K and L, right, I have different things here. Like they're not really, like I have something that's different here from here. And I can't compare the two directly. I have to go indirectly. But this gives you a constant term and then everything is equal to that. It's somewhat commonly used as a little thing in problems. In harder problems, it's a little thing. In this problem, it's the thing that solves the problem. And now that we're done, as always, thanks for problem solving.